Welcome to another week, another show of Hawkeye with me, Dave O'Hara, momentarily. You'll see our buddy James Vandenberg joining us on screen. James, former Hawkeye quarterback, great. Always look forward to talking to James. Back from a bit of a, a, an excursion and a trip he was on, so usually we have during, James during football season, so we're going to keep that rolling this week after a bit of a break from James. We had him on earlier this year. And then after James, we'll have Doug Wagner, the voice of WMT Radio, all of the state of Iowa. And Always look forward to talking with Doug. Doug, of course, does the Bumper Brigade pregame show, the Hawkeye Huddle postgame show. I'm on the postgame show with Doug on WMT and former Hawkeye receiving great Marvin McNutt, one of James Vandenberg's uh, former wide receivers. And then we'll close out the show in our sports betting segment with Scott Pritchard, Scotty P, a Northeast Iowa native, doing very well as a professional, full-time professional sports better in Las Vegas for the last 30-plus years. So there's your show wrapped up and lined up for today. So we'll start it off with our buddy James Vandenberg. James, former Hawkeye quarterback, is always great to see you again. And how's everything going with you, my friend? It's good. I didn't know there was a thing as a professional sports better, though. <laughs> All he does, well, I tell you, there are, well, because this is becoming part of the common nomenclature, he has been doing that only solely. That's his only occupation for 30 plus years. And there are multitudes of those, James, by the way, just in case. Yeah. Uh, it's not just with the sports betting app. So it is It is interesting that you say that. A lot of people ask that. But yeah, so that, there you have it. But so let's you and I talk a little bit about uh, Cade McNamara. You're a former quarterback at Iowa. You played with Kirk, played under Kirk Ferentz as a head coach. You had different offensive coordinators, obviously. But let's talk about this a little bit with Cade. Where do you see, you know, is he still throwing off his back foot? I mean, statistically, not that bad last week. 14 for 20, 98 yards, not great. Uh, one interception, but two fumbles, James. And that's one thing you know Kirk Ferentz preaches is protect the ball. Let's talk a little bit about Cade McNamara's play, please, James. Yeah, I, I mean, listen, it's a tough environment. It's a tough team. It's a, a tough defense. I, I thought, I mean, in general, the, the ball came out well. It went where it was supposed to. We don't know exactly, me or you. We don't know the reads. We don't, unless I rewatch it, don't know the coverage. So, it's really hard to exactly grade it. You, you never want to turn the football over, whether you're the quarterback, the center, or the running back. I mean, especially against a team like Ohio State, the margin of error is just small. So obviously those are blemishes that can't happen. But really judging it from outside of that, I mean, when he got the ball out, like guys are getting tackled. There's There wasn't a whole lot of just guys running wide open. So I think it's harder to dive in probably more than that. Yeah, no doubt about that, to your point about protecting the ball and uh, getting the ball out. I will say this, and we'll talk about this in upcoming shows, but LeSean Williams leaving the program, as is uh, Caleb Brown. A lot of people talking about that wide receiver, and where's he at, and why is he not playing, and what's happening? Well, now you've got a bit of a window inside of the program, and same with LeSean Williams for injuries. I think both uh, cases are far different although running back and wide receiver on that side of the ball. But we'll get to that at another time. So, James, I want to talk to you a little bit more, uh, besides with Cade McNamara and the quarterback play, with Brendan Sullivan coming in. And I like that Kirk has immediately said, no, we're not doing that yet. How would you – you had a little bit of that, you know, when, when Ricky Stanzi got hurt, you came in. What's that like with a change in regime at quarterback? But also, there are times when he puts him in a goal line set when Brendan Sullivan is in and Cade goes to the sideline. He seems very happy and okay with that. But – Talk to us a little bit about that platoon because, James, as we've all heard in, in quarterback or football circles, if you have two quarterbacks, you have no quarterbacks. So let's talk a little bit about that, please. Yeah, well, me and Rick were a little bit different because we yeah. were both equally unathletic. So <laughs> skill set-wise, it wasn't like either of us were probably going to bust a 50-yard run. I, I, I think Sullivan brings a different look, a different feel, bigger kid, stronger kid, faster kid, physical kid. And the difference is he's, he's played in the Big Ten. I mean, the guy played at Northwestern in, in one game. So um, it, it's not – this isn't your normal just, oh, let's give this guy a shot. I think there really is a different skill set there. How it gets used going forward, I don't know. Um, I think it's been great, though, down on the goal line. It's a completely different dynamic. And if you talk to any defensive coach, when they have to worry about a quarterback running, that is a guy who's unaccounted for when it comes to running the football. And so – whether we see more or less, I have no idea. I think it's a good dynamic, though. It gives us a little bit of edge, definitely down there when things get tight. I agree with that, and I like to hear that. Like you said, uh, defensive quarterback coordinators go crazy when the running quarterback gets down inside that red zone, as they've done with Brendan Sullivan. So then let's close out with you this week talking about the travel. In Big Ten, we now know, is 18 teams coast-to-coast. 
dealing with time zones, although in Iowa, they're a little, we're a little bit more fortunate because going west, we have a two hour difference where the folks from the east coast is three hours difference, east coast, west coast. Uh, so, and then of course, when the Hawkeyes go east, that's an hour difference moving ahead. What's this going to be like for UW, Washington coming in? I know they played one game earlier in the Eastern time zone this year when they lost at Rutgers, but that was a Friday night game, James. So this is essentially a 9 o'clock game. Yes, it's an 11 o'clock kick on Fox National TV from Kinnick Stadium, which the Hawks are very used to. But for UW, this is technically their time, West Coast time, is a 9 o'clock kick. Talk to us a little bit about that. I know Kirk Ferentz always says, we don't worry. We'll play any time of the day or night. We can't be worried about that. I know you heard that all, all during your playing days. But what's that like as an individual? Well, I think it's going to vary by program. You think of Iowa, we practice a lot in the morning. So if this was us, the other way around in this example, I mean, we show up and practice in the morning. That is our daily schedule. So it's more abnormal if we play at 2.30 or 5 o'clock or whatever the case may be. So every program is going to be different there. They're going to allocate time to get over early. That's going to be a different from just schooling. I mean, playing in the old Big Ten, you left on a Friday afternoon and then you played on Saturday. I assume a lot of people are going to be coming Thursday morning, Wednesday night, Thursday afternoon to get a day, two, three to basically adjust to that. Um, but I actually think yeah, I'm similar to, I guess, to Kirk. The time matters less to me. I think the overall just making sure it's still a business trip, both when like we go to UCLA or for a Washington coming here, there's a little bit of this new feel and it could be easy to get carried away that it's still a football game. It's just a conference football game and not downplaying that, but it's still a business trip. You're showing up to play a game and with all these new environments and new teams. And I know I even as a fan felt that over the weekend, like seeing Michigan state playing Oregon, seeing USC at Minnesota. I mean, it's a, it's a different feel. It's still a football game. We're showing up for one reason and one reason only. So um, the time is less relevant to me staying buckled in as you go through maybe a little bit of a longer road trip. That's probably more important. Now things have changed over the generations. Guys have their own phones and own social media. Well, depending on Kirk Ferentz's policy or your university's policy on social media. But what did you do then? Did you go over film if you were in your room by yourself or talk to the family on the phone? Or how did you occupy your time during the day in the room? A college game day, watching all the noon kickoff games. I mean, you, you end up just basically watching football with your roommate to a large degree. Yes, you've got your calls and your sheets, but you can only look at that stuff for so long. And by that time, you know all of it anyway. So it's more of, man, I hope there's a decent movie on or a good game or something <laughs> like that um, to kind of kill that time. James, it's always great to see you. Thanks again so much for joining us and look forward to talking to you soon. Thanks, Dave. Have a great day. I will, and you do the same. Always my pleasure, James. James Vandenberg, former Hawkeye quarterback. Great. Always appreciate him joining the program here at Hawkeye. I'm Dave O'Hara. We'll be back with more. And Doug Wagner, the voice of WMT Radio, joining us. And then we'll close out the show with our sports betting segment with Scott Pritchard. Back with more Hawkeye in just a few moments. Hawkeye is brought to you by Better Edge, your ultimate social betting marketplace. With no vig, you're bound to win more on every bet on Better Edge. Founded by Hawkeye alum, James Siles, and proud Iowan, Greg Kayeski, Better Edge delivers an unmatched betting experience. Plus, what's not to love when they're committed to supporting charities and children's hospitals near you? Join the action now. Sign up at betteredge.com forward slash Hawkeye and get $10 to start winning more today. Better Edge, where your social betting means your bets go further and you win more. Welcome back to Hawkeye with me, Dave O'Hara. Momentarily, you'll see our buddy Doug Wagner joining us. Doug, of course, the voice of WMT Radio. Doug does the Bumper Brigade. Besides the morning show for WMT Daily, he also does the Bumper Brigade, all things Hawkeyes, pregame football uh, on Melrose and Melrose, and then does the Hawkeye Huddle postgame with Marvin McNutt, former Hawkeye uh, receiving great, and me. Uh, we talk all things Hawkeye football before, during, and after the game. So, Doug, it is always great to see you. Thanks for joining us. and. How you feeling after Ohio State last week? And now we roll into back to Kinnick for a nationally televised game, 11 o'clock kick at Kinnick against, on Fox against UW. How you feeling, Doug? 
We had not put together four quarters before. We managed to put together nearly perfect two quarters. And we had the turnover battle one, two to nothing. We were still down seven to nothing. So you've got to play more than perfect football against a team like that. I think that uh, we were able to manage penalties well, which was fine. But then second half, the turnovers, just everything fell apart. And uh, once that thing gets rolling, it's pretty difficult to stop the roll downhill. It just gathers momentum on itself. Uh, you go ahead, you flush that game afterwards, and then you're coming up against a Washington team that upset Michigan, um, who was number 10 in the nation at the time, it was really kind of a surprise because Washington's sort of a quixotic team. I mean, they they I mean, they know it was an in-state battle, kind of like Iowa, Iowa State. They have Washington, Wazoo, uh, but they lost to Rutgers as well, and I know that was at Rus Rutgers, but I think a lot of it has to do with the consistency of both teams. Um, I was going to have to get a full four quarters in, maybe even three. I'll take three, Dave, okay? I mean, yeah. I'm not going to joke with you. I'd take three at this point. And uh, an early kickoff, I know I'm going to be at the corner of Melrose and Melrose at 8 a.m. for the Bumper Brigade, brought to you by Comfort Care. We're going to be doing that on WMTAM, KXIC AM, and KOSY FM here in the uh, Cedar Rapids, uh, Iowa City metro area. Doug, you know, you and I and Marvin talked about this on last week's show, Hawkeye Huddle, on radio. And I'd mentioned to you guys that, to your to your earlier point, the Hawks put together two of four good quarters. They started the game off okay, only down 7 up at a half. And as you mentioned, the floodgates opened in a bad, bad way for the Hawkeyes, and they get outscored 28-7 and lose 35-7. Yeah. So as you mentioned, you got to flush that, look at the film, take, take care of whatever you got to take care of. Because I think a lot, I don't want a lot of people overlooking you, Doug. Yes, I know Kalen DeBoer left, and this isn't the team that played the national championship game last year and lost to Michigan. They avenged that loss because it's a completely different Michigan team this year. It's a completely different UW team this year. Jed Fish is now the head coach, left Arizona, and now he's at UW. And then you've also got a very good quarterback who left Mississippi State, and now he's at UW and Will Rogers. And you've got Coleman, a very talented and right. effective running back. You've got Boston, uh, Denzel Boston, who leads the Big Ten, oh, by the way, and touchdown catches with eight. I think there's a push within the Iowa program to say, hey, now that they're part of our conference, we need to welcome them to the Big Ten the way that we know we can play ball and do this correctly. I mean, there's a lot of things that just got to get ironed out in that defensive backfield, the too many big plays in that we're just not used to those kind of things happening. And whether it's, you know, maybe the handoff from the linebackers to the D backs or somebody just getting smoked on their way by whatever it is, the big plays just got to stop happening. I understand that Washington's got the top touchdown receiver in the big 10, but he's not either of one of those two that played for Ohio State. Thank goodness. He's going to try and prove that he is, but I think this Iowa defense at home in front of the Hawkeye friendly and faithful are going to have to stand strong and really go up against this, or, you know, however they do it, just push back and say, hey, you know what, we're, going to, we're not going to allow a touchdown today and really, really work hard on doing that as far as the defense goes from Phil Parker. And they could put together the four quarters. I mean, it was the time of possession battle in the first half of the Iowa Ohio State game was dead even. Okay. Second half, it was 10 to 5, 9 to 6. You can't have the defense on the field that amount of time and expect to have anything good come out of it, let alone the three turnovers from the offense in the second half, Dave. Yeah. And as I mentioned to you guys on radio, I said, good news, bad news. You asked for good takeaways, bad takeaways from yeah. the Ohio State game. And I said, good news, bad news. They had a good start and put together two good quarters, first and second. Bad news, they had a bad second half and put together two bad quarters, uh, third and fourth. So, yeah, at some point, as you mentioned, uh, they've got to put together a complete game. And that's why I mentioned that earlier, and, and you're spot on. Denzel Boston, Coleman at running back, Denzel Boston at wide receiver, yeah. and uh, Will Rogers at quarterback. This is very formidable, and those miscommunications on defense, they the bend-don't-break mentality – they're going to have to be ready. And, of course, the offense is going to have to do some things as well. But, Doug, what are you foreseeing at Kinnick when fans coming in? I know how crazy it becomes to what the second largest city in Iowa, uh, yeah. Melrose and Melrose does, Iowa City around Kinnick, for pregame and postgame. And then I know you got to cut away to go up and get set up for radio postgame when yeah. Martin McNutt and I join you. But what are you foreseeing on the bumper brigade on Saturday morning, 8 a.m., three hours before kickoff? i got to believe Hawkeye fans are going to be ready to rock and roll, Doug. You know what? I think it's going to be a little bit later arriving crowd just because it's a an 11 a.m. kick. So typically we'll get there. It takes me 
um, 45 minutes to get down from Cedar Rapids right to our broadcast spot. I don't think it's going to be any more than that. It's not like an Iowa State game. Um, I think that you're going to have a lot of newbies at this game who are going to be interested in seeing what Washington looks like as a Big Ten conference member. Uh, I don't think you're going to see a whole lot of the purple and gold in this. And I, I think that you're going to have a lot of people who are going to be skeptical of Cade McNamara. They still are skeptical. They just have not seen him can have the greatest, uh, you know, percentage of com com pass completion percentage in the world. But when you're not putting up 100 yards passing, you've got to do something about that because, I mean, that's the huge thing. You and I talked about this before uh, on Saturday, along with uh, Marvin McNutt. They've got to do something to get Cade McNamara away from the line. Now, Washington's not going to be like Ohio State in that they're just going to steamroll over our offensive linemen. I, I don't predict they're going to be that way, but at least give him some more room, you know, put him in the shotgun mode, put him in, you know, I was talking with Gary Dolphin on my Monday morning show. And he said, Oh yeah, we've used shotgun. Like, where was it then? I mean, I didn't yeah. say that to him, but I just, where was the, the different options? Why do you not have a running back ready to do some sort of a draw? So you can have something other than two tight ends stand up or an empty backfield even, but you're under center. He's not mobile. They were getting back to him as fast as he was getting back to set so he can start his check and his progressions. Got us, got to do better than that. Um, I think we're going to have a full house. It's going to be a nice, crisp fall football day to start off with, probably around 55 at 8 a.m. when we start broadcasting and uh, looking forward to it as well. Afterwards, looking forward to the Alter for Cat Hawkeye Huddle where we take our uh, listeners' phone calls, texts, and they stop by the loose chain over in Cedar Rapids, Northeast side as well. You're amongst the people, and I love it because you get a great feel for that. And yeah, we just yeah. talked to James Vandenberg right before you, former Hawkeye quarterback, about Cade McNamara protecting the ball, two turnovers or three, an interception and two fumbles. Mm -hmm. uh, you got to protect the ball, and that's a huge, mm -hmm. obviously, no-no in any football program, but especially for Kirk Ferentz and that offense against a team like Ohio State. You cannot give anything away. So they got to shore that up, and consistency, as you mentioned, Doug, right. has to happen. Folks, there he is, the voice of WMT, statewide radio, and on multiple other stations in the iHeart Media group. But Doug, of course, is host of Bumper Brigade, as we just talked about, besides his more daily morning show on WMT and, and other stations throughout the, the uh, system. Doug also host of Bumper Brigade pregame show three hours prior to pregame, as the likes of the aforementioned Gary Dolphin and others on during the show. And then the postgame show, Hawkeye Huddle, uh, joined by Marvin McNutt, former Hawkeye receiving great, and me. Always look forward to chopping it up with you, Doug. Thanks so much for giving us that perspective you, only you can give us. Always appreciate it, my friend. On Iowa, Dave. On Iowa, indeed, and go Hawks, Doug. For Doug Wagner, I'm Dave O'Hara with Hawkeye. We'll be back to close out our show with the sports betting segment with Scotty P. Scott Pritchard, Northeast Iowa native, joining us from Vegas. Can't wait for that. Back with more Hawkeye in just a few moments. You don't have a lot of time to make decisions today if you want to be out front with the newest products. This is Joe Mershman from Mershman Seeds. Did you know that we're one of the first two companies to offer Enlist E3 soybeans in the United States? And because of that, you benefit from it. Here's Ben Paper to tell you more. With Enlist E3 soybeans, we have a front row seat to the highest yielding germplasm that's on the market. That allows us to focus on the things that matter to you, making sure you get what you ordered delivered on time to ensure the highest yielding soybeans for your farm. Contact your local Mershman Seeds dealer today. They care and are ready to help you. Welcome back to Hawkeye with me, Dave O'Hara. Pleased to have our buddy, and you'll see him momentarily on screen, Scott Pritchard, Scotty P, a professional sports better in Vegas, Northeast Iowa native like me, and most of you watching an Iowa native, Scotty P, bringing it back to us from Vegas. Scott Pritchard, always great to see you, my friend, at Pritchard's Wins via social media, at Pritchard'sPicks.com. Check out the Let's Bet show that he does every week, live streams and then podcasts. Everything in the sports betting world. Scotty P, a professional, full-time professional sports better and very successful, I might add, for the last 30-plus years out in Vegas. Scotty P has a 66-plus win percentage for his paid picks, 62% or 61% plus win percentage on his free picks. Folks, you know you got to go 52.4% just to break even and anything above is gravy. Scotty P getting it done big time my friend it's always great to see you and thanks for joining us how's everything going with you scotty p living the dream sin city las <laughs> vegas life is good my friend how are you david i'm doing great and always thanks for asking scotty p and always glad to see your bright shiny uh, smiley face ready to rock and roll for another week endeavor 
into the sports betting world for you. It's every day, but for us here, we do the weekly show, so let's get into it. Let's get back to our conversation from you and I have had this regularly on a radio show. You join us on the Circus Sportsbook radio show every week with Mike Palm and me, VP of operations, and an, also an Iowa native like you and me. But the interesting thing to this, I want to talk props again, Scott, with you. And, and the biggest prop I always like to talk about are former Hawkeyes currently in the NFL, George Kittle being one, uh, Sam Laporta with the Lions, of course, Kittle with the tight end for the Niners, Laporta tight end for the, the Lions. Eric Hall, a lot of people forget, don't forget, folks, he did play for the Hawkeyes one year or part of a year because he got injured, but is now the tight end for the Bengals and doing very well. So, And TJ Hawkinson will come back around Halloween in a couple of weeks, supposedly, from a major injury last year with the Vikings at tight end. So there is a lot of... Uh, there are a lot of options, Scotty P, with Hawks and, and looking at prop bets for individual players. Well, that's a great point. And when you talk about prop betting, there is a specific value there because you're talking about a niche, niche market. And oftentimes the sports books have seven days to get the side total money line right. But they are only so many hours in a day. And when you have a ton of games going on on a Saturday and or you follow that up with a Sunday, as an example, I made four prop bets for the limit at, actually, they cut me back even more last night because I've been world-class and kicking ass when it comes to the prop betting uh, on a week-in, week-out basis. But I made four bets. I can only go to the bet window one time a day because they're limiting me so badly out here. But I'll take what I can get when I can get it. Four prop bets. The one that I lost was Derek Carr passing yards over 208.5. It closed 213.5. I'm getting five passing yards, the best of it. And as you know, my friend, I don't care if it's the upper Iowa Peacocks playing. I am only looking at numbers and value, nothing more, nothing less. To your point on props, because it is a niche market and they don't closely monitor as much as they should, uh, they will limit you. They limit me more than anybody, but even uh, Joe the Plumber or Carpenter from Topeka, uh, you're limited on props because it's very beatable. They limit you because you are so successful. You talk about street credit. If anybody wants to say, well, gee, how's Scotty P doing? Besides giving them your actual numbers and how well you do in contests, that's a hurdle I don't think we talk much about. And I'm glad you brought that up today. That's got to be difficult for you to swim in those circles. It is very frustrating. Uh, you know, friends of mine will say it's a good problem to have, or, but I, I would rather people insult me, just let me bet, just let me get down. But respectfully, it's gotten so corporate that more and more of the sports books, whether you're betting in Vegas or in the islands or with your Ill, illegal bookmaker at the corner bar on Main Street in every small town USA, the fact is it's getting to the point where they only want square action. They only want sucker action. My personal opinion is use me to your advantage like you used to in the past. Go ahead and limit me. Don't say, hey, you can only come to the bet window one time a day because you're a sharp, you're a wise guy, you're an unfair advantage player. Instead of just saying, hey, you can only come to the bet window one time a day, just go ahead and limit me to a nickel or a dime per play. I'll go other places. But the fact is, I'm such a value guy that oftentimes when I'm betting, it's only because that number only exists at the one place I'm trying to get down. That's why I always teach, train, and explain. I'm doing another bet, a sports betting seminar at the Cosmopolitan on the Strip here on Friday, teaching, training, and explaining before I do my Let's Bet podcast. On I'm always saying to anyone and everyone who bets, you want to have as many options, as many outs, as many sports books as humanly possible so you're not handcuffed and limited to one or two books. Having access to as many books as possible means that you can get two and a half instead of having to lay three. As you know, that's a key, key number, but you know, three, seven, six, 10, 14 in that order, those are key, key, key sides in regards to point spreads. I find it so fascinating when you talk about these uh, seminars that you put out, and I'm so glad you went there because your website has everything in it that, that a sports better would want, even the neophyte, uh, the beginner. Go to at or pritchardspicks.com or at Pritchard Wins via social media. Everything is linked up there. Scotty Peel will take care of you. Again, the numbers are there. The raw numbers are the raw numbers. You know, it's paid picks, 66 plus percent winning percentage. Besides being limited by the sports books, he's still getting it done. 30 plus years, very successful sports better in Vegas, Northeast Iowa native, along with me. Uh, and always look forward to talking with you, Scotty P. Thank you so much for taking us inside the sports betting world and not just 
because James Vandenberg brought it up, but I have many viewers. And viewers, thank you again for the questions. Keep them coming. At Dave O'Hara Sports via social media or DaveOHaraSports.com. Dave at DaveOHaraSports.com. And I can funnel the questions to Scotty P just as he handles them every time he's on this show. Scotty P, it's always great to see you, Scott Pritchard. I look forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks. Really appreciate the opportunity, David. And just as a reminder to your viewers, this Friday, let's bet one o'clock Las Vegas time. My guest is Chris Piper. He won the Circus Survivor $6 million. He's my guest this coming week. Next week, living legend here in Las Vegas, Bill Krakenberger will be my guest. So again, tune in Friday, one o'clock. Let's bet at richardspicks.com. David, love you. Love the show. Keep up the good work, my man. Love you, love your show too, Scotty P, and thank you. Likewise, I will say this. It's interesting you're having Chris Piper on, two titans. He leads you by a game and a half right now in the Circuit Invitational. So you are a true fair opportunity guy. I love that. Hey, folks, there he is, Scott Pritchard. For Scott Pritchard and Doug Wagner and James Vandenberg. And to you, the viewers, I'm Dave O'Hara of Hawkeye. Thanks also to my production partners, James Siles and Greg Kieski at Better Edge and BetterEdge.com. That's all from us at Hawkeye. Thanks to all of you.